Good evening from Nottingham, where Rishi Sunak and Sir Keir Starmer have clashed over tax, immigration and welfare in their final head-to-head -head debate before polling day next Thursday. It was a heated confrontation during which they faced questions from a live audience behind me who challenged them to explain and justify their stance on integrity in politics, the cost of living and Brexit. Well, our political editor, Chris Mason, is here. What stood out for you, Chris? For me tonight, Rita, it was all about the tone. It was all about the exchanges as opposed to the content. I mean, of course the content matters, but much of that will be familiar to regular viewers over the last five weeks or so. But it was the exchanges that defined tonight. It was a more free-flowing debate than we've seen in previous debates in this campaign. There was more anger, there was more passion, there was more jeopardy. Rishi Sunak had nothing to lose tonight, and that defined his approach, I thought. He really went for it. You could feel that. Keir Starmer had everything to lose, and you could sense that too. But he was much more aggressive than he was a few weeks back when the equivalent programme took place on ITV. I think he'd kicked himself a bit after that debate for being insufficiently aggressive as he might have seen it. Uh, tonight, the scripted put-downs were there from both of them. The things that they anticipate might be clipped up on social media in the coming minutes and hours and circulate with a half-life between now and polling day. They were prepped. They were conscious of what was at stake. It was quite a watch. When this campaign started, it felt like spring. Summer has finally arrived, for now at least, here in Nottingham. And so too, the two men wanting to be Prime Minister the weekend after next. Good evening. Tonight, the beginning of the sprint finish to polling day. First up, Sue, and you probably won't be surprised by her question. People are dismayed by the lack of integrity and honesty in politics today. After the recent allegations about political betting, how would you restore trust in politics? This takes leadership. What I did when one of my team was alleged to have been involved and investigated by the Gambling Commission, they were suspended within minutes. I was furious to hear about these things. That's why I've dealt with it. But the choice of this election is about, as Sue said, it's about leadership, it's about integrity in politics, and that's a question about doing what you say. You know, the Keir Starmer's made this broader point, but the point is, he's changed his mind on every major position that he's taken. Sakir jabbed back. What about wider questions of culture in government, he asked. This isn't just, um, you know, what's happened this week, uh, last week in the Gambling Commission. We saw Partygate earlier in this parliament. The Prime Minister himself was convicted and fined for breaking the rules which he brought in and imposed on everybody else. Next, on to a question about benefits as the exchanges got more punchy, energised, personal. And I just want to address Beverly's well, you, point. You opposed There's it when I announced it. I, I, if, you you literally to, opposed I'm, it. If you listen to people in the audience across the country more often, you might not be quite so out of touch. Beverly. <laughs> you are going to have higher welfare under you, and that's why you can't deliver tax cuts the way that I can. The Prime and Minister people said... should not surrender to this. If, if, if there's that much wrong with the system, who's the guy in charge of the system over the last 14 years? Well, why is it so bad? Well, Kit, you, you want to well, be in charge, it? but you've got nothing to say but to people about what so you would bad? do about it. We're an island. Why can't we easily close our borders? If Keir Starmer is your Prime Minister, all those illegal migrants will be out on our streets. And that is the choice for you. Do not surrender our borders to the Labour Party. Steve, this on is complete the, and utter nonsense. On the numbers. Sakia said, hang on. If it were working, why are record numbers still coming under your watch, Prime Minister? How on earth can you say it's working? Labour want more return agreements, which Rishi Sunak took the mickey out of. Iran, you can see. Syria, Afghanistan. So when Keir Starmer says he's going to return people, is he going to sit down? Are you going to sit down with the Iranian Ayatollahs? Are you going to try and do a deal with the Taliban? It's completely nonsensical what you are saying, right? Next, the economy and Rishi Sunak returning to a favourite theme. So I say that the them. Labour Party's policies will mean all your taxes are going to go up by thousands of pounds. It is in their DNA. Mark my words, your pension, your council tax, your home, your car, you name it, they will tax it. Well, pensioners are not going to be better off with the Prime Minister who's making promises that he can't keep because they're not funded. That's exactly what Liz Truss got wrong. We cannot... There's one thing that we cannot repeat at this election. Please do not go back 
to Liz Truss Mark II with this Prime Minister because the same damage will follow. The whole point of nights like this is the power lies with the audience in the room and Robert made the most of it. Mr Sunak, I think you made a fair job of being Chancellor, but you're a pretty mediocre Prime Minister. Sakir, I think that your strings are being pulled by very senior members of the Labour Party. Are you two really the best we've got to be the next Prime Minister of our great country? My primary job was to deliver that economic stability so I could start cutting your taxes. That is the journey we're now on. So whatever your other frustrations, the choice for you at this election is about the future. It has to be rooted, if we're going to restore hope, in my view, in returning politics to service. Thank the you. sense that you come into politics to serve. And then... Vicky in Oxfordshire, who asks this, will you protect women's right to single-sex spaces from any and all males, regardless of if they hold a GRC, a Gender Recognition Certificate? Rishi Sunak? Yeah, yes, unequivocally. I get that not all of you will agree with my position, right? But I'm being clear with you. Sex means biological sex. You have to change the Equalities Act to deliver the security of women's spaces and women's services. Is... That's what I believe the right okay. thing for our country is. Keir Starmer said it was important to protect women's spaces and added... I will treat them as I treat all human beings with dignity and respect. And I'll tell you for why. <laughs> uh, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, standing in Parliament, making an anti-trans joke in front of the mother of a murdered trans teenager. I will never, ever allow myself to be put into that position. Okay. Brexit was discussed too, as were prospects for young people, and then this flashpoint during their closing statements. And before you make that choice, think what a Labour government would mean. Can you afford to pay at least £2,000 more in tax? That is a lie. Thank you very much. And this and is he's just done it. And this is your closing statement, Keir Starmer. If you want to end 14 years of chaos and rebuild our country, then that power is in your hands. And that was it. Five weeks after this campaign began, its final set piece moment had finished. Chris Mason reporting there, and we'll hear from Chris again a little later in the programme. Now, in the BBC's first election debate earlier in the month, we spoke to representatives from the seven biggest parties in Great Britain, which included the Conservatives and Labour. We asked the other five for their reaction to tonight's debate, and here's those who replied. It was like a third-rate vaudeville act. The big things that should have been mentioned weren't mentioned. Scotland wasn't mentioned once. Brexit wasn't mentioned once. He didn't respond to the question about the trade relationship with Europe. And austerity wasn't mentioned once. And for that reason, I think this represents this selection, and I've been in elections for 40 years now, represents the biggest fraud on the people of the UK and on Scotland that I've ever seen. If you listen to the debate tonight, I think the, the gentleman in the audience who really hit the nail on the head was the gentleman who said, is this really the best that we've got and actually what we've seen over the last few weeks is that many people have really made a human connection to Ed Davey because he's demonstrated that we can make people laugh, we can make them cry and that he has a real experience, a lifetime of experience. I think it was the narrowness of the debate that was most shocking and that's what happens when you leave out all the other parties from the debates quite frankly. We had a conspiracy of silence from the two main parties on some of the key issues like the climate crisis, like the situation in Gaza, like no one standing up for issues like free movement. What we had were two men basically trying to outcompete each other to be as cruel as possible to some of the most vulnerable people like asylum seekers and refugees. I'm deeply disappointed that the only mention of Wales was by Rishi Sunak and he was referring to Wales as a political football, which doesn't look to me like a plan, a real plan there, which he likes to talk about. And of course, there was a there was a gentleman in the audience who, who asked, um, is this, are these two the best on offer? And I think there will be many people who will agree with that. Well, let's get a bit more detail on the claims made during the debate about immigration. BBC Verifies Nick Erdley is in the newsroom in London for us now. Nick. Thanks, Rita. Yeah, some really heated exchanges and claims on small boats crossings. Here's a reminder of what was said. The numbers have come down over the past 12 months compared the to the 12 months before. 
But Isn't in order to numbers? fully solve this problem, you need a deterrent. There are tens of thousands, 50,000 people have come since Rishi Sunak has been Prime Minister, 50,000 across the channel. Okay, let me unpack that and let me show you what's happened in the last few years. There is no doubt when you look at this graphic here that the number of small boats has gone up considerably overall. And when you add this together, Keir Starmer was right to say that 50,000 people have entered the country on small boats since Rishi Sunak became Prime Minister. But they were both using different calculations about what's happening right now. Because although it's not totally clear from this, it is true to say that small boats crossings are down over the last 12 months. They are down, as was claimed, 30%. However, look at that red line there. There have been a record number of people crossing the channel on small boats so far in 2024. So that's a bit context on why they could both make those claims that sounded contradictory on small boats. Now, through the whole campaign, both parties have been trading blows on tax and spending. And you probably noticed in his closing statement, the Prime Minister mentioned tax going up £2,000 for working families under Labour. A reminder, we've checked this one before, it risks misleading people, is based on questionable assumptions from political advisers. There is a lot more, Rita, fact-checking of both leaders from BBC Verify online now. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you, Nick Erdley there. A last word now with Chris Mason. Where does this last debate leave the contenders then, Chris? It leaves the two camps tonight, Rita, pondering how their men have done and beginning the spin uh, to try and argue that their candidate has won. I'll just give you a little sense of that. Labour saying there was only one person who looked in the room like they were a Prime Minister and it was Keir Starmer. The Conservatives saying that they're happy with the Prime Minister's uh, performance and point to the fact that Keir Starmer had no answer, they claim, on what he would do uh, with illegal migrants. I think if we take a bit of a step back, uh, this is a format that Rishi Sunak seems more comfortable in than Keir Starmer. His message discipline, Rishi Sunak, was very noticeable tonight. A repeated phrase about don't surrender, the idea of the country ha being handed over, if you like, to Labour, if Labour win uh, the uh, general uh, election. From Labour's perspective, a definite strategy tonight, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, to be much, much more punchy. They knew that uh, Rishi Sunak was likely to try and throw the kitchen sink at them, and they were trying to argue back in a similar kind of way without, so they hoped, losing an audience who might think it's far too interrupty, it's far too uh, confrontational. What I'm struck by as a final thought is that the opinion polls have barely budged an inch in this campaign as far as the Conservatives and Labour are concerned, with Labour miles ahead. When you watch that debate tonight, it felt much more competitive than those polls might suggest. And a snap poll from YouGov suggested it was 50-50 in terms of the performance of each of them as far as the audience at home uh, was concerned. Nothing yet in this campaign has significantly shifted these polls. Let's see if this, or anything in the final week, can or does. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, as always. Chris Mason there, our political editor.